Good morning, my name's Dan and welcome to my allotment here in Essex in the southeast of the UK on this absolutely beautiful Sunday morning. So today I'm going to be talking about four very important subjects for gardeners and allotmenteers. The first one will be ground clearance, the next will be composting, the third will be building soil fertility and the fourth will be time management. So these are all very, very good subjects to discuss and they all roll into one all together. So I'm going to give you loads of ideas here, so stay tuned with the video and hopefully you'll learn quite a bit. Before we get started with this video, please feel free to like it if indeed you do. Please feel free to share it with anyone you think may be interested. And if you like my channel, like my videos and you would like to see more, please feel free to subscribe. I've had this allotment now for just under a year, so I took it on last December and it's done really well, had some good productivity from it. So I've got all of it down to cultivation currently. So here I've got some spinach, Brussels sprouts, chard over there, beetroot chard, spinach, etc. So plenty growing still, but what I've done is actually covered up some areas for weed control and soil enrichment. When I took this allotment on, a lot of it was grass, weeds, couch grass, twitch grass, etc. whatever you want to call it. So what I wanted to do was clear vast areas very quickly. So I employed the no dig method. So under here, actually this year I grew potatoes in it, but the way that I turned it from grass into a usable bed was I put cardboard down and on the top I put some ready-bought compost which I actually brought down here and laid on top of the cardboard. So if you're interested in the actual timeline of this allotment and what it looked like when I took it on, I'll link some videos down below. The first will be what it looked like very soon after I initially took the allotment on and then the one after that will be when I built these no-dig beds. So they may interest you and you can see in more detail how I went about initially building them. You can see I've currently got it covered with this weed proof membrane. Very handily, the lady that had this allotment before me, she left these curb stones here down the allotment. So I've actually used them as weights to hold the membrane down. It's also very good because it makes it very easy to strim up against them for tidiness. You can see here I've mulched this with some grass cuttings. So I work as a gardener, so I get plenty of grass cuttings, which is very good indeed. So underneath, this here is the compost that I brought down. So you can have a look at that. Absolutely nutritious and yielded a really nice crop of potatoes. So these grass clippings here, you can see they are starting to break down very nice already. And grass clippings are rich in nitrogen, which is otherwise known as a green. So it's really good to mulch with. And with this covered over like this, so the grass is acting as a weed suppressant as well and of course then the membrane over the top further adds to that and what you can do by doing this is you can literally forget about big areas of ground and this can clear and it can keep enriching you can keep clearing and it's just a very time saving efficient way of clearing big areas whilst you're enriching the soil at the same time. So one of the biggest drawbacks of no dig gardening, certainly in the initial phase anyway, can be the cost of compost. And for many people, myself included, it is prohibitively expensive to keep buying compost. It just, uh, it can get very dear indeed, particularly if you are wanting to cover big areas. So there's certain things you can employ in order to make this a little bit cheaper for yourself. Here you can see my compost bins. This is my compost delivery area as well, if you will. So you can see there, that is some horse manure that I had delivered. So that load that you can see there, that was 25 pounds, including delivery. So it was about six, seven months old when I got it. So it's probably about a year or so old now. And it's mixed with about 20% wood chips. And I actually started planting in it when it was six, seven months old. And it's been very good indeed. So you could consider, you know, laying your cardboard down to clear your area and then putting some horse manure on six, seven months old. As long as it's relatively well composted, put that on and then you could consider planting into that and that's a lot cheaper certainly here anyway than it is to buy a few ton bags of compost or get that delivered. This area here from this corner to this corner squared. This area here has been an absolute powerhouse of a yielder. You've already seen 
the spinach, the chard, the beetroot, and some Brussels sprouts here, but I was growing courgettes here, runner beans, climbing French beans, and also potatoes with some massive yield. So I'll link some harvest videos down below if you'd like to see what I managed to achieve here, and you can also do the same or something similar. And the majority of it was cleared using cardboard, the horse manure. I also had some compost mixed in with that and also some straw, which we will come on to a little bit later on. It would have worked with just the horse manure and I would have had some very good yields as well. But uh, you know, this big area here, and I turned it over into this huge productivity area, if you will, using very little effort. And it was very time efficient, to be honest. You'll have to excuse the rustic appearance of my shed here. I haven't uh, <laughs> sorted it out really, but uh, so you can see here, I've got some cardboard here. So whenever I can get hold of cardboard, I prefer to use the plain cardboard. I uh, get hold of it basically, and I store it in places such as this. So cardboard is a brown, it's otherwise known as a carbon. So uh, it's part of composting. Some people don't like using it because in effect, it's not natural, but um, I've used it to great effect here. But um, if you can get hold of cardboard, store it. So when you go shopping, if you can see some cardboard such as this, take it away. Many people will give it to you. Quite often, you know, you'll go to people and when you visit them or when you're doing work for them, whatever, and they'll be getting rid of cardboard like this in the recycling. Many times they're quite often happy to give it to you. Now, regarding the harvesting of compostable materials, so you can see here, I have grass clippings. The majority of these have come from my grass cutting job, some of which also from cutting the grass here, my area around the allotment. So grass is a green, otherwise known as a nitrogen. And literally I just chuck it in here. It was in that one as well. The compost bin here I've emptied and used to mulch here that you saw earlier underneath the membrane and also further down the allotment as well. But uh, many people once again will be happy to give you their grass cuttings. Many people will put them out for recycling. If you've got friends, they might let you take them. Other allotment tiers that cut their grass, maybe they don't compost and uh, they might be prepared to just dump their grass clippings into your compost bin, which you can use at a later date. So with regards to grass cuttings, I prefer to use grass that hasn't been treated with anything. So no herbicides, um, you know, weed killers, or what do you call them? Artificial nutrients applied to them, whatever. I, I prefer not to use them. So I would rather just have grass as it is, all natural, and uh, it makes a great compostable material. Here you can see I have some straw bales. If I'm not mistaken, these are barley straw bales. So use them as a raised bed. And I grew some pumpkins in here, Variety Pacific Giant. If you're interested in seeing the pumpkins I grew, I'll link that video in the description box below. So I made a nice raised bed, which yielded some fantastic pumpkins. So straw is a brown, otherwise known as a carbon. So basically the way that I looked at this was you're doing two, I was doing two jobs at once. Got some compost, for later on in the forms of these straw bales. And it was also a raised bed filled with the six, seven month old horse manure at the time. So I was getting a good yield whilst composting at the same time. So you can get bales for about two to four pounds each. It can vary depending on where you get them from and the going rate at the time. But once again, it's composting waiting. So if I wanted, I could take these up now, break them apart and mix them up with the grass in the compost bin there. So the grass being a green, a nitrogen, and the straw being a brown, a carbon, about a 50-50% ratio, mix it up in there, and then you're gonna have more and more composting going on. So I have actually put straw into beds as I have been building them in the past, and I've found they can help to retain moisture, which is very important here, particularly in the southeast, because uh, we don't tend, we can get some of the driest and hottest summers by UK standards. This year though, I must say, we did have plenty of rain, but uh, you get the general idea. Now, a little bit of a warning about using straw bales, straw, etc., in your beds. Sometimes there can be seeds left in these, and then you can end up with them subsequently coming up in your beds. I don't mind particularly if that happens because they're quite easy to pull out, but uh, if you want immaculately made beds and you don't want that to happen, maybe don't use the straw or make sure that uh, you've kept it for a long time in the dry. So for example, if I bought these bales and I kept them for say two, three, four years in a dry place, then um, you know I could then not guarantee, but be less likely for there to be seeds in there still to then spring up in the bed. So there we are. If you're gonna store 
bales and you're going to move them a long way, make sure you keep them dry because they don't half get heavy, okay, when they get wet. But uh, straw bales, nice way of getting some compost in waiting to your allotment or your garden and also build cheap raised beds out of. I'll give an example here of time management and how you can employ many of these methods here to quicken up your gardening a little bit. So you can see that this is covered here. This is tarpaulin, a little bit of membrane left here. You can see this bit here is currently uncovered, but it was covered. I borrowed the cover, the weedproof membranes, took them down there and used them down there. But uh, I had it all covered. So when I had my harvest of, I think here I had some, I think it was, courgettes, yeah that was it, and other things. Here I had some runner beans and also some climbing French beans and some potatoes as well. When they all came up I covered it over in order to control the weeds. So I've now got some broad beans growing away in pots in the polytunnel and soon I'm going to be planting them out here. So other than leaving an area uncovered where weeds and grass etc can grow, if you get it covered up straight away, then you enrich it maybe with some grass cuttings like I did there, and then you can take your cover off and plant straight into hopefully clear ground and it can just move you on and save you loads of time. Regarding covers you can use to cover the ground, you see here this is a ton bag and many people will give them to your builders, landscapers if you get deliveries in them and you can reuse them. They'll last a long, long time and you can cut them as well so that uh, they take up a bigger area. This one here I've just sort of folded up if you will and used it as a cover here. You can get all sorts of these sort of um, membranes. I'm very fortunate I can, you know, I work in the trade so I end up with leftovers that people give me etc and that's uh, very handy but to many people will give you bits and bobs that uh, you could use and I've also looked actually and you can find these covers made from cornstarch so they're natural that could be an interesting option to look into. Now this area here has been very productive so it doesn't look a lot now you can see there's grass and weeds coming up into it but when I took this allotment on last year this area was covered with a membrane so the soil underneath was relatively clear so what I did actually was planted directly into the soil. I didn't put any additional nutrients in I just literally planted straight into it and it yielded some good crops this year so if I was going to use this area next year for productivity what I'd probably do is put some manure down maybe some grass cutting straight over the top I would consider using cardboard because there are you know there's some grass in here and some weeds and I'd then cover that up and let this sort of turn into another no dig bed I'm not going to though because I'm probably going to put maybe like three or four probably four fruit trees in here but um, I would be tempted actually to get a load of those grass clippings I showed you earlier, just chuck them down here and then cover them up and see what happens. So it is an option, if you wanted perfectly clear or as close to it, you know, growing medium next year, you know, the cardboard and then some compost on top could be a good option and then you could cover it over and hopefully by the spring, sort of like May time, it'll be ready for, maybe before, be ready for planting into. Once again here you can see I have more compost in waiting in this uh, container here. I reckon this was some uh, sort of water container that was once in somebody's loft but uh, I got hold of it and used it to grow potatoes in variety Aaron Pilot. Very good yield. So there we are. Now this six seven months old at the time so it's getting up to about probably about a year or so old now something along those lines maybe a bit longer but I could take this manure now and I could spread it over the garden over the allotment to further nutrify and enrich the soil so I think you're getting the idea of what I'm sort of getting over to you here time management and composting clearing allotments you can sort of all roll them in together if you sort of take the right approach and you don't have to sort of compartmentalize everything and if you start doing that you can start going for what is optimum optimal and um, you can sort of uh, get a little bit overwhelmed I certainly found that uh, you know a long time ago when I maybe tried to do that a little bit but uh, anyway if you've got any comments questions whatever please feel free to post those below and let me know what you're doing with composting because I can learn from you we can all learn from each other and I think that's very important but uh, anyway if you like this video please feel free to like it share it with anyone you think may be interested and it may help and if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up please feel free to subscribe as always thanks for your time enjoy whatever it is you're doing and see you in the next video